In 2002, Stephen Hawking's book, The Theory of Everything, was published, the title suggesting that the, the scientific method is so powerful that it has omniscient potential. The first question of the debate is, can science, in principle, describe everything? Slavoj, we'll start with you, and then this is a free-for-all. People can, can jump in, um, have a free exchange. Again, we have to be very specific. Science, we mean the modern science. First, Galileo and so on, physics, that model, and then <laughs> we know... <coughs> Sorry, what happened in the uh, in the twentieth uh, century? But then uh, let's go to the end. What interests me are those mixed phenomena. Like, uh, did you hear about neurotheology? The idea, which I think will ultimately fail, uh, fail to uh, artificially through simple intervention into our brain arouse generate religious experiences. Of course, this is a limited procedure, but it nonetheless interests me what remains after this of traditional, uh, of traditional uh, religion. Second thing, precisely this uh, plasticity, adaptability of religious experiences, how it can adapt, incorporate nutrients and so on, is for me rather a, a, a sign of its insufficiency. Like, sorry, but all religions cannot be true if you take them seriously. And doesn't this adaptability rather not signal in the sense that there is some basic propensity towards religious experience? I admit this. It's very difficult to be a consequent atheist. I would even go, that was the point of my Niels Bohr example, to say that most people, even atheists, at some practical level, they, they are religious. Even Stalinism, not in the sense that Stalin was like God and so on. But you know, when Stalinists speak about objective necessity, responsibility in the view of the loss of history and so on, they presuppose a figure of the big other where, if I may be to show, the ultimate meaning of everything we do will be finally recognized. So you presuppose a kind of divine perspective, the meaning, the meaning sorry, of everything, uh, of everything uh, will be settled. But, uh, you know, that's my paradoxical relationship towards religion, although I'm an atheist. You know where, for me, religion is at its most interesting? When precisely it tries to adapt to science, but leads to apparently crazy results. My, probably you, most of you know this story, which is, again, absolutely my favorite one, about uh, how a friend of Darwin, some British bishop, whatever, who was literal, fundamentalist Christian believer, had a problem. He saw that Darwin is onto something serious. But the Bible tells him, he was literal here, that our universe was created a little bit over 4,000 years ago. So how to combine this with, with implications of Darwinism? You, I hope you know what his solution was. The best theory of ideology that I know. His solution was that, of course, God cannot lie. He did create our world 4,000 and something years ago, but he directly created fossils like creating reality in a movie studio to give us a wrong impression of openness. I think that is the best definition of ideology, this false openness, creating a wrong uh, uh, past. Uh, can science... Uh, 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 in principle uh, uh, describe everything. I think this is the standard, not religious, but uh, even modern European transcendental philosophical argument. It cannot because it lacks this philosophical reflexivity which shows you the conditions of your own scientific activity. I am not a Habermasian, but here Habermas made a good point where he said, yes, we can provide a perfect naturalist description of a human being. 
But we are doing this as members of scientific community following a certain procedure, a certain understanding of being. I agree with your point about mechanist materialism, and this was not simply the result of studying reality. It can be clearly shown that this mechanist aspect was an a priori that this materialist of the 18th century brought into reality. So this type of reflection, which shows how scientific reasoning itself, it may try to explain everything, but in some sense, it's unable to, to fully account for itself. Something, a certain scientific approach to reality and so on, must already be here. And you always already presuppose it. This circularity, I think, escapes uh, science itself, at least in the sense of modern science. The limitations of materialism are, are, are fairly clear when it comes to consciousness, but it's also um, run into great problems in cosmology and physics. As most people know, many cosmologists now think we live in a multiverse with billions, trillions of other unobserved universes, not a shred of evidence for them. 95% of reality is dark matter and dark energy. We haven't got a clue what they are. They've been invented to shore up the equations of physics so the cosmology works. But by titrating in as much dark matter as is convenient to make the equations balance. Um, and superstring and M-theory with 10 and 11 dimensions are untestable. Uh, they predict the existence of at least 10 to the 500 other realities or universes. Um, so physics is a mess, and many people feel that theoretical physics is stuck. I think it's stuck. Um, but uh, meanwhile, the problem of consciousness and consciousness studies is the most glaring limitation uh, of materialist science. And I think that's what's so interesting is that in response to the hard problem, many uh, philosophers of mind, even if they're atheists and materialists, are now becoming panpsychists. There's been a panpsychist turn in philosophy, uh, saying there's some kind of consciousness even in atoms and molecules. And if you take that seriously, as I do myself, um, then you have to ask, well, what about the consciousness of the sun? I recently published a paper in the Journal of Consciousness Studies called, Is the Sun Conscious? I answer yes probably. And what about the consciousness of the galaxy and the universe? And if we get to the consciousness of the universe, then how does that differ from pantheism? And if we get to pantheism, how's that very different from various forms of panentheisms? Um, we get into a realm of theological discussion. So I feel that materialist science is certainly very, very limited and its limitations are obvious. I think science is likely to expand to become much more pan-psychist and um, I think there are other principles in science which are likely to be expanded including our view of the mind and allowing it to escape from the confines of the brain. And so science can expand a lot further than it has done now. It's held back by materialist dogma. Um, but even so, I think it will still be incomplete because it will still presuppose ourselves, our minds, our own abilities to understand the universe, um, uh, which it won't explain because it, the mind that's doing the understanding can't very easily explain itself since it's presupposed. Um, so I think there will always be limitations, but I think right now it's more limited than it needs to be. So I, I'll hop in here um, uh, in response to the question whether science in principle could describe ev everything um, and maybe just add this. I guess, well, one is that it hasn't so far. Um, most reputable scientists that I'm aware of, I mean, this is uh, the, the Dawkins quote actually sort of takes me by surprise, don't think that it can, um, have no expectation that in, in any time soon it will be able to. But I think the maybe more pressing or for me more interesting question is, would we even want it to? And here I must say, I have um, a little anecdote from Richard Rorty, um, who's American philosopher, yeah. who, who has this wonderful um, uh, little scenario that he has um, in a piece that he wrote in the mid eighties called Science of Solidarity. And he's being very che cheeky and I think quite funny. And here he's talking about philosophers, but we could say the same thing about scientists. So let me just do this Rorty and move. 
He invites us to imagine a scenario where the greatest scientists, pardon me, all over the world are convened together to come up with the truth about the entirety of the world. Yeah, they're going to describe everything. And they have their, their, their many, maybe days long um, conversation. And then they all agree. They can agree that um, values are objective, that science is rational, that truth corresponds to reality. And lo and behold, they can describe the whole universe for us. And they're just going to put it together <laughs> and hand it out, you know, pass it out um, in due course. Rorty asked the question, would, would people say, you know, yay, we've been saved? The scientists are going to answer everything for us. Or would we recoil in horror, um, not only at their hubris, but also at the utter absurdity um, of, 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 of that claim? And Rorty proposes, or su supposes, as do I, that I think I would hope that many, uh, that, that th those of us sitting around the Zoom room um, or listening in would be like the latter. Um, so why would that even be something desirable because again science is something that human beings do so what you're really saying is you're going to hand it over to a group of human beings to then adjudicate what the absolute truths of our world are and i think that would be um, um boring at least um and terrifying at at worst so um that that's my thought on that that question to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.